Hi, welcome back to Home Time. It's getting a little chilly here, so our number one priority right now is to get some heat going in this place. That's right, we are calling it the Creekside Home, and we'll get you caught up on where things are at with the radiant floor system, including the high efficiency heating plant, energy saving pumps, and space saving fittings, all coming together down in the mechanical room. We also want to take a look at a couple different ways to retrofit a radiant floor system. One that goes over an existing slab, and one that gets attached from below. So I think we'll really get you up to speed on that subject. That's right, we like to pack a lot into one show, so stick around. Like you, GMC believes professionals work to a higher standard of craftsmanship, discipline, and innovation. GMC, proud to lend a helping hand to home time. Now we want to talk about getting heat into the building. It may not look like it, but it is getting a little bit cold here. So we're going to show you what we're using to fire up the radiant floor system. But first, we should show you what's already been installed. Now the first component would be the radiant floor tubes that Jason Iverson laid out in the lower level. That was after we prepped the floor with a thick vapor retarder and some rigid foam insulation. You've seen that pipe before, officially called cross-linked polyethylene tubing, but better known as PEX pipe. It carries the heated liquids throughout the house to warm the floors, so it's laid out in a series of loops to cover each part of the floor and then return to a manifold. And you have 11 loops here? Yes, and the 11 loops are actually spread out through the basement designating certain areas like the bathroom itself is on its own circuit so if you want to have that warmer than the rest of the basement you can actually have that warmer so when you're in the basement and you don't have your shoes on you walk in barefooted and the floor is actually comfortable. Once they had all the tubing run we had the concrete slab poured over the top to fully embed it. Now, the concrete not only protects the pipe but also provides a thermal mass that warms up as the heat runs through it and helps maintain an even temperature across the floor. Now that took care of the lower level, but later Jason came back and took care of the first and second floors. Now it might look like the loops are all spaced the same everywhere they go, but they do set them closer together near windows and exterior doors to get those spots a little bit warmer on a cold winter's day. The PEX comes in thousand foot rolls, so you'd think they could go forever with one loop, but there is a limit. So is there a length of loop that you cannot go beyond? Yeah, we try to keep everything less than 300 with half inch pecs. Okay. Because otherwise you get too long, the flow starts slowing down, you don't get the heat transfer that you actually need out of the tubing. Now typically all the loops get run back to one central location on each floor and then get hooked up to one of these called a manifold. Okay, this is a manifold that we use. Basically it's a distribution center that what you can do is use to connect all the tubing that you have running through the different loops or even different rooms. Okay. You'll basically have your hot water come in here, there's temperature gauge to see the temperature, it'll flow out through the room, come back up to the return, and then go back to be able to be reheated and start the process all over again. Now for the upper floors we like to use a different kind of underlayment to embed the tubes and it's a good idea to get that down as soon as the tubes are in. It's a combination of gypsum, sand, and water which the guys have mixed in a truck and then pump through a hose to pour out on the floor in a very controlled fashion. What's amazing is how something coming out so wet can set up so quickly that you can literally walk on it within a couple of hours. And in addition to the thermal mass qualities, it also helps with sound control. Gypsum cements are typically used to help with sound transfer, whether it be impact sound from step stepping on the floor or sound transfer just from talking between rooms or between the floor below. Um, this gypsum cement is actually bonding to the wood subfloor so you have one type of bonded floor that is very strong you know typically 2500 psi. And that brings us now to the present where all of our tubes are embedded and we are just about ready to turn on the heat. Jason Iverson is back getting this side of the mechanical room all loaded with all kinds of equipment that we should probably talk about. There's a boiler to heat the system and that has a modulating gas burner and an efficiency rating of 95%. It's called a condensing boiler because it captures the heat from the exhaust that's created when the gas is burned and then uses it to heat. That also makes it more efficient. There's an indirect fired water heater with an inner tank for domestic hot water and an outer one for the radiant floor. Now the boiler heats up the outer tank which also keeps the inner tank warm which makes it a lot more efficient than a regular water heater. 
Circulating pumps are critical to the process to keep heat flowing to the various zones calling for heat. And these have highly efficient ECM motors and modulating speeds for increased efficiency up to 80%. Now we've got some fittings here that are highly efficient in other ways, and that is because it combines more than one fitting in a single casting. Now this is going to take up less wall space, easier to install, and it'll cut down on leaks because there'll be less solder joints. They also make it easier to isolate things like circulating pumps by combining ball valves and flanges in one single unit. If you put one of these on either side of your pump, then you can make a switch or a repair without having to shut down and drain the whole system. So Jason, those fancy valves do save you quite a bit of time, don't they? Yes, actually they do save me a lot of time, Dean. It saves me a lot of T's and a lot of solder joints and it's all in a nice tight little package. When you got the mother of all valves down here, I mean, look at that thing. Yeah, that's the whole package. Basically, instead of adding all the ball or adding a separate ball valve isolation flange, the separate copper T's, it's all built in. So why don't you kind of step us through how this whole system works? Basically, you got the boiler up here. That if there's a call for heat at the thermostat, if it's the space heating part, it tells it to come on at a low temp. These two pumps come on sends out the low temp water to whatever area is calling. So what does this pump do here? This pump over here, basically if the hot water heater decides it wants to heat water, it'll tell this pump to come on and tell the boiler to come on at a lot hotter of a water temp. Okay, so this then heats at two different temperatures. Correct. Well, I mean, it's really a fairly straightforward system when you think about it. Right. It, yeah. it can be complex, but it, if you install it and keep it simple, it'll be a simple system. I mean, it does get a little bit more difficult once you hit all the manifolds and stuff up there, but uh, we'll cover that with you on another day. Sounds right. good. <laughs> we'll let you off the hook today all for right. that Sounds one. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Now there are other ways to anchor radiant floor tubing, and we've tried a few of those on some of our past projects. One of those was during a remodel at the house where my husband Paul and I were living at the time. And there wasn't a lot of space, so we wanted to take out the old radiators. Mike and Dennis, the heating contractors, helped with that, and we wanted to go with radiant floor heat instead. Now, the best option there was to attach it from the basement down below. This is a retrofit radiant floor heating system, the same PEX pipe you've seen us use a million times. What we're doing is taking these metal pans and we just pop the PEX pipe into these little these little tube spots here you can see we've, we've done it here and then we screw this up to the ceiling and we want to heat the floor above so we'll put a lot of insulation in this space right here make certain the heat heads up there and not down to the lower level okay Judd let me get this thing nailed in here a system like this can be installed I think by just about any homeowner but I'll tell you hooking it up to the boiler a whole nother thing that's why Mike and Dennis are here they came up with this plan for us this is uh, what we ordered all of our materials off of. There's one zone of heating in the kitchen, another zone of heating in the dining room, and then we added a third one. It doesn't show it here, but we all have a third zone, what used to be the, uh, the uh, eating area. Okay, Judd, here, let me grab the side for you. In order to prep for this tubing, we're pounding all these nails flat up against the subfloor. This is below the dining room, and uh, hardwood floor has all these nails sticking down. Don't want any holes in our tubing. Keep feeding that. Yeah, here now we again, go. We have three loops, as we call them, to provide heat down here. The way this works is we'll have hot water coming in on one of these tubes that has copper running back to the boiler. It comes in here, it'll circulate through these joists over to this point, and then that tube comes back over here, hooks up to copper again, heads back to the boiler, and that's how water circulates. And that's what Dennis is hooking up right now. Since we are dealing with the hardwood floor application, we want to make sure that we use a separate system than what we're using on the ceramic tile area just because they operate at different temperatures. If we run a warmer temperature on the radiant flooring in the dining room area, we actually could cause the flooring to crack, buckle, and even uh, shrink a little bit due to the excess temperatures and drying out of the wood faster than what it would actually do on a normal rate. And as we're pulling out this PEX tubing, you want to be very careful that you don't kink any of it. Just uh, do it very gently. How far do you want this to go down? Yeah, we'll just take this all the way down to the down to the end. That should Outside do it. Wall. Yep. Having about four people is actually perfect for this job because you can have one person holding the spool and letting it off the spool, one person threading it from the spool, another person uh, pulling it through the joist, and another one pulling it down the joist. 
You just have to be real careful and it's dirty, everything's up above you in an old house, it's all dropping in your eyes. So it's also really good. Wear a hat with a big bill and glasses, safety glasses. I think we'll work on a bit more and then we'll we'll turn it over to the lucky uh, homeowners. As far as the homeowner running the tubing and so forth, that works out really well. It can save them a lot of money. It's a very labor intensive process and it's not that difficult for the homeowner to do. There's a lot of holes that have to be drilled, the piping has to be pulled through those holes, and it's just a good way for the homeowner to save money. Now that worked out pretty well and we definitely appreciated the extra floor space from not having those radiators. Now you can also lay the tubes over an existing slab like we did on another project. For this application they recommended that we first glue down some plywood over the top of the slab so that we'd have a nice surface for attaching the panels that would hold the PEX pipe. Now well, here's how that worked. Anyway, we're well into our radiant floor install now, and the pieces that hold our tubing look like this. They're four feet long, seven inches wide, and a half inch thick, and they have this aluminum transfer panel on the back. Now, because you're looping the loops throughout an entire room, they also have what they call transfer returns, and that's this piece here, and this is what you put on the end of your straight run to complete your loops throughout your room. Now you need some careful planning to make sure you've got adequate heat in each room and that's where Jim Crisby's been the go-to guy on this project. He came up with the plan for heating the entire house and he's been giving the guys the expert direction on how the system goes together. So Jim, give us a sense about how you're laying out this heating system here. Okay, well the first thing we do is we, we do a heat loss, a room by room heat loss on the project. Once we did a room by room heat loss, we determine where our manifold locations are going to be. The manifolds distribute the warm water to the different rooms. We have a manifold location in the mechanic room. It allows us to get to the family room and the kitchen. And we also have a manifold location in a closet. The closet allows us to have a central location to get over to the bedrooms, the bathroom, and also the dining area. Also, you have to have a game plan. The layout allows everybody on the job to know what's going on by looking at the blueprint. We have some people that are moving the material. We also have some guys that are just in charge of cutting the panels. We have a guy just screwing down the panels. Um, sometimes a heating contractor, sometimes a dedicated radiant floor heating guy, and a lot of times they'll involve the carpenter contractor. And then we have some other guys that are working in between. So uh, a little teamwork is, is required. So what's the advantage of this plank system? A couple advantages. First off, it's a half inch plywood system. It's just in a system on the market. And being a retrofit system, the total floor height is, is important. Another thing is uh, we're using a quick pack. It unfolds uh, it goes on extremely fast from that standpoint. It's a dry system. It doesn't add any moisture to the structure. It's plywood, so it, it allows any of the trades to secure their hardwood floor or any other materials to it very easily. This application is perfect with the existing slab on grade uh, with the three quarter inch uh, plywood put over the top and then the panel attached to the plywood. It's working out great. I don't know how it would have been done any other way. Well, it's going really, really fast, so I'll let you go okay. ahead and finish it up. All right, thank you. Thanks. You have to have enough guys, but not too many. So we got Jim's here, he's laying stuff out. I'm cutting, laying in, Judd screwing off, people are cleaning. We want to get this thing done today, so we're just hustling all over the place. So we got bodies flying everywhere. To attach these planks, we're using a stand-up screw gun. This is the ideal tool for this type of application because it's long, you don't have to bend over, and it's very fast. We're looking for approximately 10 screws per sheet. One on each end of each plank, one row down the middle, and then one in between each middle row to the end. If you had to do this by hand with a, just a regular cordless drill, take you 20 years. When you're done, pull the coil out, grab a fresh one. To load this up, you take this strip of screws, slide it down this little channel that holds them in there, feed it into the uh, mechanism down here, bang, you're ready to go. Well, the tubing here goes in the slots, and that's where the hot water goes. That's what warms the floor. So we've got three guys doing this. We've got one guy putting the uh, silicone down in the slot, and that's what holds it in. And the second guy's got a rubber mallet. He's pounding it in. And then my job is I am the tube man. I've got a 1,000 foot, and if this got loose on you and started coiling up in that, it would be no good. You can't have any leaks. It has to be done beautifully, and that's, that's why they got me here. This is our manifold distribution system. This is where we bring all the pipes back in from the floor. They all connect up into a manifold. 